<laughs> Before we get started, um, so that we're all on the same page, we'll be using the term non-technical careers almost as like an umbrella term to refer to any job or profession within the tech industry that is anything other than computer science, engineering, um, software development. We don't have anything against those folks, but today it's all about non-technical career options. And so some of those include marketing, operations, strategy, HR and recruiting, and tech sales. Um, I was gonna introduce myself at first, but I'd rather us jump right into the panelists first. We have Selena, Amelia, Kendra. Um, Kendra, why don't you kick us off? Tell us a little bit about yourself, where you're coming from, and then we'll each go after that. Sure, so my name is Kendra Morales, and I'm the VP of Client Engagement with Vets Recruiting. We are a 10-year-old executive search firm, um, and we work with the hyper-growth companies. So I think to date we've built um, 36 or 37 unicorns out there across the board, um, all go-to-market roles. So we have nothing against technical people either, but for the most part, we work with kind of those need for how do we scale, how do we build now. Um, I've been in, um, in technology recruiting for the past <clears throat> 22 years, and um, I love it. I love everything about it. I love the people, I love the scaling, I love the growth. I recently relocated from East Coast to West Coast, so I'm in San Diego right now enjoying the sunshine, but um, I'm here, I'm excited to be here, and um, a definite resource for people afterwards if you wanna link up and just have conversations about where, where to go within organizations like that. Very cool. So I'll go next. Uh, my name is Amelia Garcia. I work at Scribd. I am the senior strategy associate um, for the company, and I grew up in Miami, Florida, actually. I moved from the East Coast to the West Coast, I guess a similar trend here. Um, started mm -hmm. in consulting, and you know we'll talk a little bit more about our backgrounds later, uh, but now working at Scribd, which again is a B2C um, subscription service for reading and listening to audio books, kind of like the Netflix for books, if you want to think about it that way. Uh, so excited to be here, um, and excited to hear from my fellow panelists as well. I'm Selena Samora. I work with MongoDB. We're not really considered a hyper startup, um, but I actually start up, I started in the startup um, area of concentration when I jumped into my role, and I'll get into that later. But I've been with MongoDB for only two months, um, but previously I was with Atlassian for four years and um, with a startup before that. Uh, so I am in charge, I'm the senior uh, program uh, manager for our developer communities user group program that's global, local. And so we are continuing to grow our developer community efforts. And MongoDB, if you don't know, um, we specifically focus on NoSQL, um, database, software, you name it. We have a wealth of technologies. Uh, so I am hyper focused on <laughs> technology in a very non-technical space. So um, yeah, that's me. And I'm in Austin. Awesome. A panel of rock stars. So excited to have you all and learn more about you. And um, I am the moderator here. This is totally not about me today. It's about all of your stories and your career paths. Um, but I am a career services manager at FlockJ, which is a tech sales boot camp, totally virtual live classes, um, where you learn all the skills needed to launch a career in tech, specifically in tech sales. Um, and then we connect you with our hiring partners like Slack, Zoom, talk about hyper growth startups and your girl. <laughs> um, but getting started uh, with this conversation, let's jump right in. I don't know who wants to take it first, but please jump into telling us how you launched your career in tech. Oh, oh. Selena, I'm you want to my hands? It's kind of like my body wants to go first, and my mind's like, wait. <laughs> um, so, <laughs> um, to be honest, tech was never in my vocabulary um, when I started down my very unconventional path of leading me to where I am now. I was in advertising. Um, I actually was going to be a veterinarian. That's a whole different story, a whole different track. Um, but what I actually fell into is community and community in the tech space, if you don't know, is an opportunity to bring our users and our customers together to share best practices, 
to allow them to connect, network, to connect and network in a space that provides a very self-serving um, experience. Mm -hmm. And that happened by chance. Um, it was a happy accident, as I always call it. Um, mm -hmm. I have a very weird, unique, I call it not weird, unique background. I was a teacher. Um, I was in advertising. I ran my own business for five years and then jumped into the startup world where I joined community. And community was kind of like, what do you mean? You know, community as community manager usually is not reflective of a tech space or experience. Usually people would have asked me if I run community in apartments and, and elsewhere, but this has actually been such a really cool experience in terms of my skill set, all the things that I learned in my different industries, and so, um, yeah, I continue to build that path and I absolutely love what I do. I would have never, my parents probably would have been looking at me like, what are you talking? You know, like my dad still has to put in his flip phone of like what I actually do, but it's a great experience. And, um, if you don't know what community and tech is, I highly suggest you look into it from startup to, um, more established organizations. So. Awesome. So I can jump in next. Uh, maybe a little bit different from uh, Selena. What I always kind of knew I wanted to go into tech. I was always really excited because it was an industry that I felt like was constantly growing and developing. There were new innovations. So I felt like you would never be bored if you work in tech. You're always trying to keep up and learning new things. And so that was always really attractive to me. But back in college, I tried the CS classes. I tried to code. Quickly learned that was not one of my skill sets. I was always a bit more on the business minded side. So I did choose to target strategy consulting as kind of a launch pad for my career. And that's really how I was able to like penetrate the tech world and learn the talk. Um, and since I knew again, I wanted to go into tech, I chose the San Francisco office where in the Bay area I had clients of all sizes and product types from the larger, more established hardware companies to smaller, maybe software unicorns that have been around for a decade or less. Um, and from that experience, I really learned that I enjoyed the smaller, maybe more agile companies in nature. And from there, I really found Scribd, which is again, a like B2C digital reading subscription company that when I joined was just over a couple hundred people really trying to change the way the world reads. And I was like, wow, what a big mission statement. All right, here we go. Um, and so now I work in business strategy and kind of my major focus is around international expansion and prioritization and you know really found home um at script <laughs> right. <laughs> by both of you um i you know being a, a headhunter in technology and early stage go to market firms forever i've always been on the peripheral of tech so i've been doing this for so long i was around before the dot-com bus so i got into this in like late 90s and you couldn't help but be drawn to tech i mean the world was changing, the internet was taking over, and there were new applications and ideas and concepts all over. So for myself, um, I knew that I wanted to work around that. I just didn't necessarily understand the path. And so um, I was actually, I graduated high school at 16, started college really early, and um, and then went into, after a couple of years in school, I went into the army. I was in military intelligence, which is, we all got these crazy unorthodox backgrounds, right? Um, and my husband at the time used the recruiter, a headhunter, to find his role, and he's like, you should try that. And I was like, you're absolutely right, I should. So I'm waitressing during the day, I'm going to college at night when I get out of the military, and then I just picked up the phone and started cold calling. And I looked for the best search firms in the area I was with, started setting up interviews for myself, and the next thing I know, I've landed in um, a technology search firm. And back in late 90s, early 2000s, I mean, it was crazy, crazy growth. And so I jumped in with both feet and started very early, just getting that adrenaline and excitement with founders and with concepts and with funding and ideas. And I jumped right in and I never looked back. Um, my first firm, I was there for um, seven years and then 13 years and recently with Bets, which, you know, we're, we're San Francisco. Well, actually, we just moved our HQ to Austin. Um, but we have offices in all of kind of the major hubs, um, Chicago, um, LA, New York, um, and then still San Francisco. And uh, 
it's just been really great to watch the growth and be part of these amazing companies all over the country as they're growing. The great thing about being a recruiter is I can drop in, help build a company, and then kind of pull myself out and go to the next. So it's fascinating, it's fun, um, and it's just ever changing. Good times. That is so amazing to hear about the different backgrounds we have represented here today and not just talking about community within tech and uh, strategy and HR and recruiting, but also we have a former like wannabe veterinarian <laughs> and we have a military, thank you for your service in here, that's amazing. I uh, am just so happy that you guys are sharing all of this and digging into um, each of your backgrounds, Selena, I know that um, you started at a hyper growth startup. And so if you want to kick us off with the next um, question of how have you grown in your career and transitioned, pivoted, we'd love to have our audience learn a little bit about. Yeah. So I think the biggest thing that helped me grow was to be very observant and really put my ear to the ground. So what that meant was just trying to understand what the opportunities were within the startup community. Granted, when you're in a startup community, you are wearing multiple hats. You have to pivot quickly. You have to be able to understand just how, you know, the organization is working from all levels. So that way you're well informed so you can make those strategic moves. But I think most important was being able to connect with individuals within my organization and outside of it and understand the path I wanted to lead. So I started having exploratory chats. I started connecting with um, communities that were similar to where I existed, which is community and community, right? So figuring out um, how I can learn from individuals who had been in the industry longer than I had, um, figuring out what skill sets I needed to find out. So I started taking classes. I started um, really connecting with, you know, evangelists in community, as well as just observing, um, you know, from kind of a bird's eye view of, okay, what communities do I aspire to work with or, or want to be involved with? And then figuring out the skill set to meet where I wanted to go next. So I asked a lot of questions, probably annoyingly, but to the point where they knew that I had, I was very passionate and interested in it. Um, I also started to recognize that everything that I did in the past was being, you know, fueling my expertise as well as my unique skill set. So that way I could actually project that forward. But I didn't recognize what I brought to the table until I had some self-reflection and started realizing like, oh, the five years that I ran a business, you know, that's helping me with, you know, strategic planning and, you know, target market and being able to like, think outside of just what I thought was necessary in that specific role. So highly, highly um, suggest, you know, having those conversations, reading as much as you can, but also diving into the experience or the organizations that you're motivated to join. So, yeah. Thank you, Selena. That's awesome. Who else here in our panel loves a good coffee chat with a would-be mentor to learn some more about them? Who did that and to grow in their career? I'm curious, Amelia. Oh, yeah, right. definitely. At least for me, I found that like just talking to people, putting time on their calendars was really beneficial. People are always willing to take the 15, 20, 30 minutes um, to talk to you, talk about their role, and that way you really can learn not only what opportunities are available and open, you never know who's hiring, but also you learn about their experience. And then you can kind of get clarity from their perspective, what they've learned to really help guide your own career. And like, at least from my perspective, I still am pretty early in my career. So having that kind of expert knowledge of people who've gone down the path before definitely is a big plus. And I would very much recommend, don't be afraid, just reach out. I couldn't agree more. I couldn't agree. If I could, as a career headhunter, give advice, it would be find people that are passionate, find people that are thought leaders in and around your space. Set time to talk with them. Passion's infectious. You know, you have a conversation with somebody and they remember why they got into all of this in the first place. And true leaders, true people that are blazing the way, they always have a hand out behind them to pull you along. So I strongly suggest finding those people and aligning yourself with them. I did that, that throughout the course of the, my 
progression in my own career. And it's it, you just learn so much about so much more than you even think that you need to know. It's it's interesting kind of the snowball effect around that, but totally agree. Totally agree. Absolutely. I think also um, folks at work sometimes want to be mentors, but it's a lot maybe easier to go to somebody asking for advice or asking for some time on their calendar rather than for them to come to you and say, hey, I want to be your mentor. I notice you need some help, uh, right? So it's always great to take that initiative. Um, and with that in mind, we'll move to our third question here, which is, aside from go and have those coffee chats, reach out to people, what is some other advice that you have for somebody who's looking to break into a non-technical career, which is, again, at marketing, strategy, community, HR, recruiting, ops? Um, what would you say to them how to get started, how to get their foot in the door? I went first last time. <laughs> <laughs> I can jump in really quick. Um, well, I'm kind of twofold because, you know, while I'm not in a hyper growth tech, I've helped build uh, a thousand of them. So if, if, you know, if anybody is interested in breaking into my industry, it's not necessarily as difficult to break into go to market recruiting as it is to be successful and stay in it and create some longevity with strong relationships and good client relationships. Um, but ultimately what I do is sales. And ultimately what I'm also doing is sales in I'm selling for every company that I'm working with. I'm assimilating what the story is, what's the compelling event, why them, why them in the marketplace overall. So, you know, with, with headhunting and recruiting in general, especially in like kind of the, the hyper growth world, it's it's all about being able to tell that story. Um, so for and, and some some clients are going to have warts, you know, it's about all of it. But I think it's, you know, for myself and sales, it's just finding that alignment with um, knowing exactly what Selena said earlier, knowing what your skills have historically been and linking that to relevant things in the industry that you're trying to go after. Where are those skills transferable? Where can you bring anecdotally some stories or experiences or successes that you've had that maybe it's not apples to apples, but maybe it's more so some of the soft skills and the intangibles around that that can help you open up those doors. Um, I strongly suggest that. And then always, you know, um, looking for an internal champion. Who do you know? Who do you know in and around there? Where can they give you some advice? Where can they give you kind of the down low on whether it's a company or whether it's a space you're trying to get into? And don't be afraid to ask for that help. I mean, we are a community overall. It's about helping each other. It's about taking each other by the hand and driving, you know, things forward. So. That's what I would say is really that internal champion, not being afraid to ask. And then just one other thing for, from my perspective is when you're trying to get into a new company overall, call high, call as high as you can. Go after a CEO, go after a head of sales, go after a head of marketing. Hey, I've got some you know, interest. Maybe I've done a little bit in or around this. I'd love to spend some time on the phone figuring out a little bit more about your organization and where my skills could make sense because I think they would. It might not work, but you know, you, you've got to ask, you've always got to ask and you'd be surprised how far you can. Yeah. I have to totally agree with that. Like, I think my biggest risks have led to my biggest rewards as cliche as that is like, you have nothing to lose. I can tell you some of my like greatest mentors were C levels. And I was just like, Hey, so do you have some time? And I know as crazy as it sounds. And I even saw, you know, in chat that I'm like, you're a little concerned about asking, but honestly, they're just like you and I, they are really on the, they step back and they're like, wait, you want me to be your mentor? Or it's more like, I would love to help because everyone has been down that path. And I think one of the things that we have to recognize is that we have to be multipliers ourselves, right? We want to continue to elevate others experiences. And we're all here to help create that energy and that fuel to get individuals to the next step. I know it took a huge community behind me to lead me where I am, not only in my family, but within my career. And, you know, I constantly walk with gratitude. So the way that I ask myself is how can I give back? So my line and my like, you know, door is always open. I think don't, you know, just what Kendra said and make sure that you, you go up for the top. Don't, don't worry about that. No matter who you ask, they were there at that some, that same point that you were. I would definitely say, consider yourself, and one of my best friends told me this, and I share this with everyone, is you yourself are a brand, you know? And so you have to be able to 
you know, we're constantly working for specific brands in our organization, but ourselves, we are a specific brand. We offer a unique skill set. We offer value. We, you know, really truly project everything that we have within us, but it's understanding what those values are and being able to sell that, you know, and I think that helped me get into community myself was recognizing that, hey, being a teacher for sixth grade science kids probably is not very, <laughs> you know, similar to being in advertising. But guess what? Advertising skills, teacher skills, all of those things, being an entrepreneur helped me build my brand to be a successful community manager. So now I have the capabilities of working with multiple people, but highly, highly recommend that you ask those people, set yourself up as your brand, project yourself forward and don't be afraid. Just don't be afraid. Yeah, yeah definitely. And I totally echo what you guys are saying. I also think that there are so many non-technical roles out there that it's also sometimes it can be feel like trial and error. Like, what are my skill sets? Should I um, target maybe more marketing or sales roles or strategy or community um, recruiting? There's so many non-technical opportunities if you really are interested in tech that sometimes it's about finding what is the right fit for you, for your interests, for your skill sets, not just what you've done in the past, but also trying to take a leap sometime to say, I like what I'm doing now, but I want to maybe pivot to a different non-technical role. Maybe I want to explore marketing and again, using your network or just cold calling and again, asking for those favors, those coffee chats to pick other people's brains. How can I get and do what you're doing? Um, I think that's really helpful. And I also think that just tech generally attracts really energetic and intellectually curious people. So don't hold back your burning questions, whether it's like, how does the company operate? What is the team culture like? Um, what do you guys do for inclusion? Like ask the hard questions because people are really open at the end of the day. They want to know what is important to you and how you think. And like at Scribd, we say we're characters with character. So we are motivated by our hobbies, by what we want to build. And we love talking and sharing about that. So um, that energy is contagious. And that's the kind of team that we really want to um, build. And I would recommend don't hold it back because at the end of the day, that's what's going to help you grow and get to where you want to be. Yeah. yeah. It's so great to see how the sort of overlap and advice, which is you, know, you can't really do it on your own locking yourself in a box trying to figure out where to get to where you want to be, right? You have to be intentional about reaching out um, continuously and going for, for the top, creating those relationships. Um, I love to hear something that Alma mentioned. Um, she said, I have a coach in the security field who encourages me to reach out to those I admire and would like to learn from by reminding me, quote, they can't eat you, that's illegal. <laughs> I love that. I love that, Alma. And something else that um, Javier here mentions is, I think the flip side is that, quote, rejection is a part of the journey. It's definitely going to happen. Get comfortable with it, and you'll be able to get ahead of the game, which is so true. Um, any tips from you guys on how to deal with rejection? Um, maybe if uh, you know things aren't working, how have you dealt with it in the past? Yeah, I think learning, I mean, learn from every rejection. Um, don't see it as a deterrent, see it as an opportunity. Um, I can't tell you how many times, I mean, um, after my startup space and, you know, uh, just being in a startup, as you know, there are a lot of things that can shift quickly. And in between my time and going to Atlassian too, I don't, I can't tell you how many times I was rejected because granted my resume did not look like the traditional resume and I got rejected multiple times. And it was that time that I had to really reflect my self brand. But the thing is I learned from it. I took it and I ran with it. And then every moment that was, you know, somewhat of a blocker, I recognize it as it was just a hurdle. I just had to get over it. I had to figure out what was going to help me get through it. And then also sharing the knowledge, passing it back. Um, because at, at the end of the day, we were all going through it. I have hit so many, so many walls of rejection, um, but still standing and still moving forward. So, yeah. I love that. I just I just read by Ines, uh rejection yes. in your direction. <laughs> yes. That's powerful. Yes. Powerful stuff right there. 
Um, I would say for um, rejection, what I do, whether in, you know we're with clients or whether you know it's in, in an interview for myself or just whatever it is, I always ask for feedback. You know, it's really good to understand at any given point, things aren't always going to work out and that's okay. There's greater design out there sometimes for us. And the things that don't work out oftentimes when you continue to move forward, take the feedback, put it where it belongs, don't let it bury you, but rather let it build you up. You'll, you know, you see if you were if you spend any time with self-reflection that that was meant to be, that that rejection opened you up for something else that's a little bit better, a little bit more powerful, or just it gets you really on the path that we're looking for. It's very difficult though, sometimes in the moment to see that, but what I work to do is trying to remove the emotion from it, really. Um, it's okay to feel it, but but to let yourself really um, get burned or stung by it, don't let it create scar tissue. Put some vitamin E on that rejection and let that scar feel and keep going forward because it, it really, not everything is meant for everyone. So staying true to those ideals, knowing your values, knowing who you are, um, and really being strong with that and doing practices around staying strong with that, that helps a little bit. It helps to become a little bit more tough while yeah. it bounces off, just in my experience. <laughs> yeah, totally. And I would honestly say with rejection, it's like it. there's no single path to where you want to get to. There are multiple different iterations of how you can achieve what you want to achieve. I remember back in college, I thought the sky was falling that I didn't get into the business program, but I just kind of took a second. And I was like, you know what? I'm going to major in Latin American studies because I love Latin American studies and that makes me happy. And I'm going to get to my business career at the end of the day one way or another. So you kind of just have to be scrappy, really believe in yourself that your talents and your skill set are desirable kind of shake off that imposter syndrome that we all have and deal with and really just put yourself out there. Um, apply for different interviews, whether you feel like you're have the experience or the skill set they need or not. At the end of the day, even if you get a rejection, it's a learning experience. You learn from the team you're interviewing with. You learned a little bit more about yourself and you refined maybe your responses. So again, at the end of the day, it might be a different path that you didn't anticipate um, not being able to go down, but that different path can still lead you to where you want to go, or even if it wasn't what you anticipated, maybe somewhere better. Yeah. I love that mentality. And I think that was a good segue when you're mentioning about uh, this is what I wanted to study and go to school for. And I don't care if that means I'm going to, you know, not have a job perfectly lined up right after school. And um, because one of our questions here from Abigail, um, she was asking if we have any tips for new grads with no experience. She said school was a full-time job, so she didn't do a ton of extracurriculars or internships. So curious where to get started, aside from the tips we've already talked about, and um, if there's anything you know a fresh grad can do to get their foot in the door. I have some thoughts I can share. And my initial um, reaction is, have a mentality of no role is too small. Um, don't be like too fancy for internships um, at the beginning where you can prove yourself and then you know gain some experience under your belt and then uh, kind of talk to your manager or your boss about coming in full time. Um, and also what, what Kendra and you were mentioning earlier is taking your job search as a job in itself with the cold calling and the outreach and undeterred until you get through someone and um, what else do you think could be helpful for folks in that situation right I think now? this is a great space right here is like really connecting with your network mm -hmm. um, whether it's at conferences whether it's you know chapter events whatever it is get yourself in front of the people that whether they have the same role or the role that you're looking to to get into or the company that you aspire to work with Granted, just what Laura said, there's no role too small. I know a lot of interns that I've worked with that came in with, you know, the passion and the heart to come in and just join this and say, okay, this is where I'm at. I've known now that like some of them are, are operations managers, you know, and are doing phenomenal just because they learned the organization in areas that a lot of us joined after the fact. So they get the you know, um, the overall role, they understand the organization more in depth. And, you know, there's really just every opportunity to connect with people, do it. Just get in front of there, ask them those questions. Um, but yeah, that's <laughs> start here. <laughs> yeah. 
And I would also say, like, don't undersell yourself either. Maybe you didn't have an internship for the summer, but I bet you were in some kind of community organization. You probably led, you probably have some experience that you can go and sell. And it might be your first job. Um, but again, you really can leverage that experience you have, whether that's in college doing, I don't know, group projects um, and leading the team, um, public speaking, or you could always apply your past experiences, whether that's in school or even um, an informal internship, you could always apply those experiences to when you're interviewing and then really just start and don't be afraid of lateral moves either. Um, not all non-technical roles are for everyone. So it's also a learning process. Maybe you're open to sales and you try sales and try it and maybe you don't like it. And moving into marketing might be a better idea. So it's again, it's using all of your tools that you have in your tool belt, um, being able to say, I did this in my sales role. I did this in college. And therefore I think I would be a good candidate and I learn fast and I wanna go into marketing. Um, don't under sell yourself because you definitely have experiences that are applicable and that would make you a good fit for the role or for the company. Yeah, I'm thinking completely. I think, go ahead, Kendra. I was just going to say a lot of early stage companies um, love hiring hypo or high potential candidates. Like the energy is infectious. Like they're looking for fresh ideas, new outlooks, contemporary ways of moving through society, moving through the world. And so I would say if you're going to put yourself out there and specifically go after, you know, targeted companies, Really do your research, though, about the company. So, you know, you know a little bit about their recent press releases, their latest blog articles, if they have a YouTube channel. The more you know about their organization, your passion and confidence, it, it overcomes and compensates for a lot of what you might not have in years of experience. Yeah. I know, like, with the past two companies that I had, culture is huge. Huge. You can have the skill set, but if you don't fit the culture in terms of the passion, the values, they're like, great but we can't really have you join if you don't really fit in. And the culture itself, like granted, I'm very, very like intentional with where I go, meaning like I'm asking the questions about culture. Like, do you have, you know, a level, of, what does your diversity and inclusion program look like? How do you support, you know, individual, you know, families and so on? Cause I'm a single mom, so that's huge for me. I want to know how you support families and employees and so on. So, and growth opportunities and all those things. So make sure you're also interviewing that company appropriately, that it's not them interviewing you. Yep. Right, a two-sided effort for sure. Thank you guys for sharing. Um, and I know that we were asked to send our audience back um, about five minutes early. So in the last five minutes, I know some folks from Script are wanting to share a quick message. Uh, so let's see here. Um, Amelia, who should I pull into? Um, so if you see Bella, I think that's probably the best person. Let me look her up. Or her. And while well, find that, give me a sec. Here are our contact. Here's our contact info. And guys, if anybody wants to shoot us a note, connect with us, ask us questions individually, one on one, about anything having to do with tech sale or not tech sales. You can tell where my mind's at with non technical <laughs> career options. Um, please take a look at that. I don't see Bella. Isabella. I see Irene, Monica, Sergio, Marlene. Sorry guys, sorry for difficulties. <laughs> While we figure that out, um, Dilson here just recommended uh, Who by Jeff Smart and Randy Street. Do you guys have any top of mind book recommendations for our audience today, professional development related or anything at all? I'm a big Brene Brown fan. I like, I like Brene Brown. I mean, she kind of brings it, any of her books are phenomenal. Um, she really like digs into 
from owning your story and the value of that to being in the ring with everyone. And she just really helps you explore your internal self and the value that you bring and project outward, as well as how to protect what you've gone through. So I, any of her books, highly recommend. Yes, yes. podcast. Her TED she's talk. incredible. She's incredible. I know. Oh, which one? I know. They're all good. Netflix. Just put her name in there. <laughs> um, I would suggest Who also. Who is a great, great book. Um, I also like Grit by Angela Duckworth. Um, I think that's good. And it's it's um, it's a trait that everybody's talking about right now. But when you really dig in, just on this panel alone, we got it. We got it. It's not going after it. It's that tenacity. It's that you're, if failure is going to happen, if you're not afraid to fail, it's not avoiding the pain, yeah. it's moving through the pain of it. So, yeah. Oh, that is awesome. All right. We'll wait a couple more minutes here, but um, I had another question from our audience. Um, and I don't know if, if Selena, Amelia, or Kendra, you guys can provide some tips here. Maybe Kendra, you, since you have that background from the military, but she's asking how can someone in the nonprofit realm looking to transition back to corporate um, kind of start that job search, build that resume to fit the corporate or startup language? So coming from something super non-traditional, what could they do? Um, having I So I happen to have started and run, so I'm the silly executive director of a nonprofit on the side, it's a furniture bank. And I can tell you that you see a lot of nonprofits not do well because they don't have the business acumen, right? So, I mean, the, the passion's there, the idea's there, the intensity's there, but, but they don't necessarily have that piece of it. So you, if you've got any sort of structured business experience and have jumped into the nonprofit side, People are attracted to other people's energy and mission above and beyond themselves. So I would really look at the skills that you acquired or that you used that would be commercially transferable. I'm sure there are a number of them, whether it's fundraising, whether it's organizing, whether it's driving, whatever your specific nonprofit was, really think about how to pull that, link that into whatever area of business or bucket that you're trying to get into and then make the calls go directly to the top um, because there's a lot that can be said and transferred, but you've got to be able to create and share that story with them. Make it clear, draw that picture for them, if you will. That's my suggestion. That's right. I forgot you're a nonprofit uh, e executive director. Look at that. Amazing. Perfect. Um, <laughs> <laughs> Anybody else? Any uh, parting advice here? Parting words? Yeah, just like honestly, also even once you've uh, edited your resume, just really drop it into their queue. Um, you never know when you get lucky and at the end of the day, what's gonna push you to the next round is how you think and attack problems that are relevant to the business. Um, and I'm sure you find similar um, challenges in the nonprofit world that you do in the corporate world sometimes. Um, so then really just applying those and really just showing them again how you think and how you solve problems at the end of the day that's what they're really hiring you to do and that's the talent uh, that they're looking for can you think um, like our business yeah, yeah. Yes, that's wonderful awesome well thank you everybody I just dropped my LinkedIn in the chat for anyone who's interested in connecting I invite our panelists here to do the same um, but please don't be shy, continue um, reaching out to folks, expanding your network through things like Techeria, different organizations. We're all here as a community to help one another thrive and uh, launch our careers and continue to be successful. Non-technical careers specifically, so exciting. You don't need to know how to code or be a computer scientist, so please consider them um, in your job search. And with that, I will let everybody go. Thank you so much for joining once again. Thanks, everyone. This is wonderful. Bye. Bye.